Welcome to the very first um, vlog project as part of the Inconspicuous Influencer series. Today we're going to be talking to Claude. Um, yeah, so we're going to jump straight into it really. And before we do, I'd just like you, Claude, to just tell everyone a bit about yourself. Um, brief background, what is you do, what makes you tick, what ticks you off. Okay. Yeah, just let the people know who you are. Alright, um, as you said, I'm Claude Williams, uh, also go by the name of Cosmic from time to time. I am an entrepreneur and photographer. Uh, what makes me tick? I'm motivated by the goal of basically I want to be one of the world's most successful entrepreneurs one day, but hopefully we'll see that soon. And what ticks me off? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got pet peeves. Yeah. So. I, what really bugs me is people not reaching their full potential. So, yeah. Okay, great. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to talk to you about, I guess, um, entrepreneurship, about influence and also about significance as well. So these are the three kind of themes I'm going to touch on. And um, first of all, um, obviously you went to uni together and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I know while you were at uni, you were a student entrepreneur. Now you're um, a young entrepreneur. And the, at the moment, there are a lot of like young people who are kind of emerging and rising up, starting their own businesses, launching their own projects and stuff. And I'd love you for you to just talk to us about kind of that journey, that experience of balancing your studies with running a business at the same time and how you were able to kind of strike that balance and also any challenges that you might have faced as well. Just, you know, give us a bit of insight into that. Right, um, well, definitely, it's not easy. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's totally not easy at all. Um, I don't know, for me, what I found to be the biggest challenge by far was uh, having a passion in one place, which means my business, mm. and then having my degree, which kind of always felt like I was getting in the way of that. Um, but you still had to get those brains though. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, because, to be honest with you, um, I was going to be a college uh, university dropout. Uh, wow. I was going to stop it all. Um, after my first year of uni, I realised that my um, my degree has no more influence on my future anymore, so I kind of realised what's the point of me doing it. What changed your mind? Um, I told my mum. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. Yeah, I you didn't pay those fees at a reason. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, but she wasn't. She didn't even take it badly. To be honest with me, she just said, "You know what? You've already started it, and like you always, like always, you always likes me to finish what I start." Mm. Um, so she made me promise that I won't drop out of my degree, and so we did that. Uh, what I kind of, what we kind of did as a compromise though, was after my second year of uni, I took a year out. Um, I was supposed to go on placement, but rather than go on placement, I spent, I spent, uh, I spent the year working my own business okay, instead. Yeah. Um, so that kind of gave me time to refresh myself, get a lot of it out of my system. So by the time I came to my final year, I was a lot, I was able to focus on, um, just focus on my degree. Okay, cool. And for any other young people who are kind of currently, I guess, in that same predicament, whereby. You know they're doing a degree that they no longer have any interest in yeah. but yet they have to finish it like yeah. not just because mum said so but because you know they don't want to be a statistic and be a university dropout yeah but at the same time they've got like you know not just a business idea but they've got a dream or a passion or something else that is really like their heart's desire that's, that they want to pursue what i don't know what kind of advice would you give to them okay. and how would you kind of you know what wisdom do you have to offer to help them in that situation um i would say finish your degree like yeah. no doubt um Having extra qualifications will only ever help you in life, it's that simple. Uh, not only that, but while you're at university, don't think it, you're only there to study. Mm. Um, there's so many opportunities, so many doors that can be opened. And totally, yeah. You only get those while you're a student. So be at university, try and do your best to get your best grade possible, but also look into the potential opportunities that you might you may be able to get from it. Along the way. Um, like, the university network is massive. You're going to meet thousands of other talented students that have similar objectives to you similar goals and similar dreams and those are people that will really push you forward but if you drop out you're going to leave all of that behind and you're you're already shooting yourself in the foot okay that's a really good answer and i hope that people find that useful as well um i want to just move on to the topic of um this notion of significance versus popularity okay like the generation that we live in today um 
is so hot on pursuing popularity, it's so hot on chasing after you know status and recognition and applause and all of that. Yeah. And um, I personally think it's the wrong way to go. I think that we should be seeking significance, um, significance through Christ as well, not just through our achievements and through our works, but significance through what the Word of God says. Um, we are who God says we are. Yeah. And um, I'd like you to, you know, give I guess give your thoughts and share your views on why. You, on what you think, um, what the difference is between yeah. significance and popularity, yeah. and why we should place such a higher value on significance rather than popularity or status, which is what I guess the current kind of thing is. Okay. Um, significance and popularity. Okay. I would say, I'm, I'm using an example, I'll say someone like uh, Martin Luther King was significant, yeah. and somebody like Kim Kardashian is popular. popular. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, that's, so that's the difference to me. One of them is, like, mm. if you're significant, it means you're doing something worthwhile, you're doing something that's important, you're changing people's lives, you're changing the world around you. Um, whereas if you're popular, just a lot of people know who you are, and that can be for a good or a bad reason. Yeah. Um, normally, like in a lot of cases, if you are really significant, you will also be popular. Mm. But I think a lot of people get confused and think that the popularity is the is the objective or the, or the, or the goal. As opposed Especially to, young people, I think, yeah. um, because the kind of the, the influencers at the moment are people who are kind of who are mainstream superstars, like yeah. who are famous for attending VIP parties or whatnot, yeah. or who who have achieved fame for things that I guess aren't really substantial. Mm. Like you said, it's about you know doing things that kind of change lives, that impact people, you know, in the, in really amazing ways and Definitely. on a long term scale as well. Definitely. But why do you think that why do you think that young people are chasing popularity? Why do you think they don't really care and see okay. the value of living a life of significance rather than trying um, to I think know. people uh, seek popularity simply because it's trying to fill a need that they're looking for in their lives. Mm. Um, a lot of people feel as if you're popular then you're being accepted by people you feel as if uh, people like you who you are or if you're playing those type of bands whereas in reality that's definitely not necessarily the case by being popular um, a lot of people who are popular are definitely accepted or whatever mm. but people kind of get that kind of get that kind of mistaken um, and I think yeah like because a lot of young people there's a lot of things missing in a lot of people's lives right now um, for various reasons if you ask me I'll say it's down to not having Christ in your life you're gonna it's very easy to just focus on what's important or it's very difficult for you to find what's, what's going to fill that gap if you don't have God there to yeah, fill it for you. Exactly. So I really do feel like that's the reason why a lot of people are seeking stuff like popularity in order to kind of fill that need. Cool. Moving on to um, notions of integrity and character. Um, I guess like in the business world those are two kind of character traits that have really kind of been missing and um, we've seen so many examples of um, you know, respected and prolific and high, um, high profile business people who've kind of done things that are questionable and, you know, that question their character and make you think, oh wow, I think you were you know, an individual who had integrity and stuff. And I'd like you to talk to us about integrity and character from a Christian perspective in particularly and also why you think it's really important for young and aspiring entrepreneurs and um, who are looking to start their own businesses and why it's important for them to uphold those two virtues of character and integrity. Okay, um, I would definitely say integrity, how letting people trust you is one of the most important things. Yeah. If nobody trusts you then especially in the business world you're going nowhere whatsoever. Um, I know of a few people, like I can tell you that like, as of right now, there are people which I know have they hold the keys to new opportunities or things that I would like to do, mm. but because I can't trust who they are, it's simply I'm no staying point. away from them because it doesn't matter what how like a zone, isn't yeah, it? it really yeah. is. It doesn't matter how talented you are, how skilled you are, how big your network is. If people can't trust you, then like they're gonna avoid you simply because you don't, they don't know what you're gonna do. And your reputation yeah. doesn't speak well of you. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and only that, but if you are someone with a bad character or a bad reputation or no integrity, then a lot of people are going to want to avoid you to avoid having their own reputation stained by that. Because, um, yeah, you always, like, you will be judged by the people you hang around with. Like, your associates will That's definitely it. affect mm -hmm. the way people view you. So if somebody's trying to maintain a good character or a good reputation, then and your reputation is bad, then people are going to avoid that, like, simple as. And how do you establish um, a reputable character? How do you establish that trust for someone or for people who are kind of new to the business world and, you know, they want, you know, 
they want to form and forge these these critical relationships. How do they kind of go about that? Um, I don't think there's any there's no quick way of doing it mm. or no even a roadmap. It's just just be those things, be trustworthy, don't lie, um, keep your words, like have integrity, and it will come over time. Like there's no. There's no to, um, how to on how to do it. You just literally just need to live that lifestyle and mm. go from there. Okay, great. Okay. And um, I know you're like a self-proclaimed <laughs> Apple lover, devout, pledge allegiance to <laughs> everything and all things Apple. I just wanted to ask you, what's your favourite Apple product and why, and how does it make your life um, simpler and slicker? Okay, my favourite Apple product okay. is definitely my MacBook Pro. Cool. Um, I literally. I literally, literally cannot live my life without it. It's, um, it's, it's almost <laughs> impossible. Um, why do I need it? Um, it's definitely, I'm a photographer, I do video. Um, using my previous Windows computers back in the day, yeah. it, they would just, like, they just wouldn't get it done. They were too slow. Um, no, I've never had a Windows laptop that's lasted more than a year. <laughs> so so from, from the time I was in year 11, I've had, I had a different Windows computer until I said, wow. you know what? I'm, I'm done. I'm gonna enough buy is it. enough. Yeah. yeah. I bought my MacBook Pro in my second year of uni and it's still alive and working now. So, Glory. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's definitely a difference in quality there. Um, how does it, it make your life slicker? So, it makes my life slicker. Apart from the fact that it's a beautiful machine just in general. Wow. Well, um, okay. <laughs> it's beautiful. But, um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like it's. It is definitely like, like I said before, um, editing photos on yeah. a, on a Windows computer versus a um, Mac uh, computer. It's just so much faster because yeah, it just works properly, basically. Cool. Okay, I'm a bit of a brand fanatic, guys. So I just thought I'd ask him that question. Love all things brands. So um, yeah, quickly moving on. Um, you're originally from London, right? Yeah. But you studied in Loughborough, and um, you're pos- you're currently in the process of maybe relocating, right? Kind of. Um, I think what I'm going to be doing for this next year is I have my parents' home in London yeah. and I'm going to have a place in Loughborough as well um, because one of my business tactics for like the way I want to do things is I don't want to be locked down to one area. Totally. And I feel working in London and not being in London is easy. Like Being away from London, I still get call-ins. So I get mm. back into London all the time so I'm always travelling down here. But to take control of um, areas outside of London is a lot more difficult when you're not physically there. Yeah. So by being based in the in the East Midlands, um, I hope to actually take over the area altogether. <laughs> so yes. basically, um, if you had to choose though, out of London or Loughborough, which one? Which one? Um, to be totally honest with you, I'm very easy going when it comes to everything, so it makes no real difference to me. Okay. Um, the thing about London is obviously all my friends and family are here, mm. but it also means that there's so many distractions. Um, since I've been I've been in London for about two weeks now on my summer holiday from uni, um, and I've got hardly anything done. Uh, whereas when I'm in Loughborough, no one's there. It's nothing. Peaceful, yeah, 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 remote, focus, <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. So <laughs> I can get a little more done in the day. Yeah. So in terms of being productive, I prefer to be in Loughborough. But I want to have fun, and I prefer to be in London. Cool. Okay. Um, and also, I wanted to ask you, since we're one of our key themes is influence, and you know, you're an inconspicuous influencer, um, well, I've decided that you are, which is why I want to talk to you and stuff. Um, what is influence in three words? What is being influential? What does influence mean to you? In three words. In three words. Hmm. Take your time. <laughs> in three words. In three words. Well, if you can't really manage difficult. that in a sentence, <laughs> in a I sentence. give you a sentence. Yeah. Okay then. Um, I guess influences, yeah, affects an area around you without you probably, probably without people even noticing. Mm. So, yeah. I like that. Affecting the area around you without people even noticing. That just sums up inconspicuous influence in a nutshell. Okay. Really like that. Um, great. And finally, um, I just wanted to ask you, how do you know that God is real? How do I know God is real? Um, okay. I can give you my testimony if you want. Yeah, go for it. Um, the song I don't say a lot, but yeah. Yeah, go for it. I hope you'll be ministered to someone <laughs> watching, yeah. Okay, basically, um, when I was in primary school, I think about the age of eight, uh, I was diagnosed with a heart problem. Mm-hmm. Um, essentially, it was like one of the situations where they give you, okay, you have X amount of time left. Um, like at that young age, I didn't really understand the like everything. Yeah, yeah, I didn't really understand it at all. I was like, okay, cool, continued my life normally, but uh, that's around the same sort of time that my my dad actually got saved. So that's my family started going to church, um, and I remember I went to a church service, um, and I literally just I went up and got paid for. And by the time, that's when I went to the doctor's, which was I think eight that week. Um, they basically. 
basically told me that yeah, there's there's no way that there could ever be anything wrong with your heart um, because you completely healed from everything that was ever there. Wow. Yeah. Um, even to the point that Amazing. yeah, I used to like as you, as you may know, I love sports. I play mm. sports all the time. Yeah. It's like it's a big part of my life. But obviously, I should be dead by now. So yeah, that's how I know it as well. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time and for your testimony as well. Um, so yeah, guys, that's a wrap. I um, really hope you enjoyed that. Hope you learned something new. Hope you guys were challenged as well, stretched, um, encouraged. And yeah, look out for the next um, vlog in the Inconspicuous Influencer series.